Now it's time to analyze our assembly to understand how it will perform when it's in use. Specifically, we will test the performance of the blade rod connector to understand how the design will stand up against the real-world operating conditions. In Fusion 360, I will switch to the simulation workspace where I can run a finite element analysis to test this component under multiple load cases. We have the ability to create multiple simulation study types to test our design and improve the performance of our products. In Fusion 360, we can analyze a static stress analysis to analyze deformation from structural loads and constraints. We can determine the modal frequencies of a model to understand the vibration mode shapes and their corresponding frequencies. A thermal simulation will determine how the model responds to heat loads under steady state conditions, and a thermal stress analysis will determine temperatures and stress distributions on a model resulting from thermal and structural loads. Let's select a static stress study type and access the settings. I'll quickly name my study so it can be easily identified later. All settings can be accessed anytime by right-clicking on the study in the browser. In the simulation workspace, it's important to simplify our assemblies and components to reduce the overall complexity, isolate the problems we're trying to solve, and remove erroneous data that is not relevant to the study we're creating. We can easily select the components that are part of the study, and in the right-click menu, we can suppress all components except for those that are selected, making it easy to remove the data that I'm not looking to include in the study. It's important to note, in the simulation workspace, we must suppress any components that we wish to ignore. Toggling visibility is a great tool while defining our study, but only objects that are suppressed will be ignored by the solver. Next, let's work left to right in the simulation toolbar to apply boundary conditions for the study. First, let's look at the materials that are being used in this study. You can see that the physical materials that are being applied in the model workspace carry over automatically. In addition, I can change or override the study materials if, for example, I wanted to test different grades of steel to understand how they might change the performance of this design. Also, expanding the material properties in a dialog box will show the material properties that are being used from the library. We will use steel, which is already applied for our first study, and set the safety factor to yield strength rather than ultimate tensile strength. Working left to right, next, let's apply some constraints to this study to describe the degrees of freedom. You can apply a fixed, pinned, frictionless, or prescribed displacement constraint to the selected geometry. We will apply a fixed constraint to the cylindrical face at the back of the blade rod connector, as well as the bottom of the guide blocks that the blade rod will slide inside of. This will ensure that the guide blocks do not move during the simulation. In the simulation workspace, we can change any of the conditions by editing in the graphics window or through the browser. Now, we will define the structural loads that are being applied to this component in operation. Let's apply a directional load to simulate the force acted upon this component under compression. By selecting the cylindrical face where the blade assembly connects to the rod connector, we will change the direction of the load by using the arrows or by defining the X angle to 90 degrees. Last, we will apply the magnitude of the force. The units that I'm working in are set to newtons. I can change these units specifically for this load case in the load dialog, or change the units globally in the browser. We will set the load to 30 pound force and apply the load. Next, let's look at the degree of freedom view, which will use colors to visually define the constraint status of the bodies in the model.
This will give us a quick indication if all of the bodies are appropriately constrained and allow me to decide if I need to further define the study. The green indication shows that all bodies are fully fixed with no degrees of freedom, as defined when we fixed all three bodies in X, Y, and Z with our fixed constraints. At this point, I've defined a study that I could mesh and solve to interrogate the results. But before I do, I also want to consider other operating conditions and effects that will be applied to the blade rod connector during use. Specifically, a tension load applied in the opposite direction and a moment to evaluate the effects of a rotational load. With most of the work already complete, I will simply clone the existing study and edit the existing loads. By rotating the load 180 degrees, I can look at the results that will be applied in the other direction. Last, we will clone the study yet again and change the structural load to a moment being applied to the cylindrical surface. With our boundary conditions defined for all three studies, next let's generate the mesh before solving. This is the process where we subdivide the model into smaller domains called elements, over which a set of equations are solved. We can see by viewing the mesh, the Fusion 360 solver has divided the geometry into many elements. Later, we will talk about mesh refinement and ways to change the size of the elements to approach a true solution. In this tutorial, we quickly applied the materials, loads, and constraints to simulate the operating conditions that will be applied to this component in our reciprocating saw.